Hello, beautiful listeners. Welcome to another edition of the Starfish Podcast, Dego. And I am your host for today. My name is Miss Maria Madabo. Starfish Podcast is a platform that brings you together to talk about elevated conversations and issues that are affecting their lives, talk about the realities of Gambian youth, as well as the solutions they can take as youths to make this world a better place. And today we are so excited to be back with another interesting topic that um, should be discussed about, that should be um, talked about among the youths and all our beautiful listeners. So um, I have two guests with me here, and I have Ms. Rose Mendy and Mr. Zina Zoker, and I'm going to allow them to introduce themselves. So tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Welcome Ladies. to the show. Ladies. <laughs> okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Rose Mendy. I work as a mentor at Starfish International, and I'm also a student at the Gambia College under the School of Education. And I am an artist as well. All right, welcome, Rose. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Zina Zoka. Um, I work as a fine artist. I work also as a teacher at um, Haliva Academy and Ida's Idea, and a freelance graphic designer as well. And glad to be here on the show. Thank you. All right, thank you so much and welcome you both to the show. I am so excited to have you both here because the discussion is so much connected to what you do. I think what both of you have in common is that you are artists and this theme is about art as a platform for activism. And, you know, we've had a lot of discussions about what art is. And for me, I think art is magic. I think it's magical, but it has to do a lot with creativity. So I want to hear your take. What exactly do you think art is? Let's start with establishing what art is, and then we will go into your stories and how you became an artist. Who wants to go first? Well, I can go. And I would say, in my opinion, I would say uh, everything is art uh, because, like, the first stage of art actually begins in, uh, when God created the world. So I think everything that involves us being present here is art. Mm -hmm. And even though sometimes it's not fully recognized, but then I, if people should pay much attention to what art is really all about, like you said, the creativity and all mm -hmm. of that, like yeah. our spirit and everything that revolves around us has to do with what art. Mm -hmm. So basically I would say art, everything is art. Everything is art. All right. Thank you. I like that. Mr. Zina, what do you think? Well, for me, I would just say like art is the expression of one idea, one, um, uh, what the person is feeling inside, just, mm -hmm. you know, as a means of communication also to the masses in a simple and beautiful way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, art comes in different form. You know, we have a lot of art. And people can like try to translate art in many ways. It could be like in a form of spoken words, uh, mm -hmm. and also, also it could be in a form of uh, painting, photography, mm -hmm. and a lot more drawing, right. beating, and all that. Mm -hmm. So it's just having a way of communicating to people to express your feelings or your talent to them, something like that. All right. So from what both of you have said, art is very broad. And I think everyone can be an artist if they focus on it, if they, you know, find, put their time into it and then, you know, practice it often in um, the different types of arts they want to venture in. So like you said, performing arts, all of those are arts, um, you know, the speaking we do, the writing, the painting, the pencil drawing, all of those, um, the clothes we wear, you know, the fashion designing, all of these are considered to be arts. And I'm glad you would know that. So let's come to having established what art is. I want us to talk about the misconceptions of art. So, you know, as an artist, you probably have gone through um, a lot. You've heard a lot about what people say an art is artist is uh, what you do as an artist that people basically just judge you for so let's talk about those misconceptions do you think especially as an as a young artist in the gambia what would you say are some of the misconceptions uh, about art um, one of the misconceptions i would say is that people think that art is actually nothing mm -hmm. because um, even as an artist 
people still have to ask you like what do you do for a living mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> yes. yeah. uh, people have to ask you okay so you're an artist and then um, what else what do you do right. you know something like so I find it sometimes very embarrassing because I mean that is what I do right you know like I am an artist uh, I paint and I draw so if yeah. you ask me what else do I do it means like I'm idle or something like that I don't yeah. have any other or you thing. have to do something better. yeah something like it, it it seems like art is not a better thing to them right uh, compared to other professions so mm-hmm. To me, that's one of the misconceptions. And another thing is that people just think that art is uh, like uh, easy. So mm-hmm. they just come up with you with some kind of embarrassing demand like draw me. Mm-hmm. Uh, or I want you to do this for me. As if like it is something that is a, a computer thing that you automatically just press and then <laughs> you know, it comes up with. So that is one of the misconceptions I think that people have about art. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> It's even worse when you are female. Yeah, I'm gonna ask <laughs> in the Gambia here. Yes. yes, because I grew up like hearing a whole lot of things about me doing art as a subject in school. Mm-hmm. In fact, not even not to mention becoming an artist and all of that. Mm-hmm. So I would say, let's say if an opportunity is to come, like before it could reach you as the girl, mm-hmm. like unless there is no other option, let's say on a boy. Like I remember my one of my uncles like someone was like oh my god your niece is so good and then he was like yeah i know i just wish he was she was a boy i mean mm-hmm. that alone like i yeah. was so mad mm-hmm. i couldn't say much but like that brings down my spirit and all of that mm-hmm. and then most of the time like when you say you're an artist people actually laugh like you an artist you're yeah. just a female yeah like how far would i take you and all of that like uh, Zina said, like, mostly people don't even take you serious. Mm-hmm. They're like, of all the professions, like, why art? Mm-hmm. Like, you have no other things, like, you too, uh, you are very smart, mm-hmm. and you can do a whole lot of things, like, why art and all of that. Yeah. But I think it's equally as important as the other field yeah. of studies and mm-hmm. also the, some of the professions. I, I mean, it's better to do art, like, if it speaks to your soul than mm-hmm. do something that you're not happy doing and all of that. I mean, that is why most of the things that people do now are failing. Mm -hmm. You see, everyone is complaining because people are into areas that they are not actually passionate Passionate about. about. They were forced into it. All right, so um, we are going to... Okay. We are going for a short entertainment break and when we come back, we will talk more about the realities of youth in arts in the Gambia. Stay tuned and go away. Hello once again, uh, my name is Rose Mendy. I am an artist and one of the things I love doing is singing and I will share one of my favorite songs which is called Shooting Star. When you don't know where to go and you're feeling all alone Look inside yourself, you're so much more than you know When you're stuck and out of time you can cross the finish line. You're the champion. you always be a winner. Oh, 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 oh. You can do anything you want. If you believe in who you are, you light up the whole world. You shining so bright. Anything is possible when you look into your heart. Oh, 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 you're a shooting star. You're a shooting star. You're a shooting star. Welcome back, dear listeners. I hope you've enjoyed that beautiful song by Miss Rose Mendy. She's actually one of our guest speakers for this show. Um, so we are talking about art as a platform for activism. And I think it's important that we also hear the stories of these two young artists that are here. And um, at this point, I would like to ask, what are your stories? Tell us about yourself as an artist. Who are you as an artist? I'm sure that is a conversation that everyone that is listening will want to know. So Zina, how did you realize um, that you are a good artist or that you are an artist? How, what was your story like? Um, like realizing that you're an artist. I think everyone, every artist starts off as a 
like from uh, uh, like childhood mm-hmm. but as you know at some point you may not know it except your parents like for me my dad told me once that um, as young as seven years I started drawing and stuff mm-hmm. uh, maybe then I cannot remember because I was not too knowledgeable yeah. about it perhaps I did it out of a natural way or something like that but then as I grew up you know because I uh, I was in this uh, local school where I um, like Sokota school mm-hmm. and we grew up you know with kids drawing a lot of the times you know like this um uh, movie characters, people like um, Rambo and Arnold Schwarzenegger, right. and they hold them with the guns and all that. So you know, growing up in social society, you you feel motivated. And I wish we we grew up in that way also. Like I wish th- that time was still around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, by when people are doing things, you're motivated to do it. And then you know, you 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 never need to have that discouragement about what you're doing. Mm-hmm. So because of that, I grew up and. I was motivated to do more mm-hmm. and I kept on doing it even uh, in, in, in junior school, you know, I was doing art and I think I was one of the most consistent person among all my colleagues mm-hmm. who even like focus uh, on art up to today. And at some point, you know, like I, uh, the only person that used to support me was my late mom mm-hmm. uh, by buying me some art materials and all that. And she, she, she would just buy it, and regardless of what color it is, I could remember she would buy it mostly like this um, purple and stuff. Mm-hmm. And when we, if you were to come to our house at that time, you realize that you know you may even think I'm a girl because all those colors were like pink and stuff. Well, she doesn't care about the color. The most important thing was like she was giving me what pleases me, and that's like drawing materials and all that. And mm-hmm. you know, it's like a great loss that I have to. You know, she didn't make it up to today, and uh, so that's the sad thing about the whole story. Mm-hmm. And yeah, but you know, when it comes to like uh, other family members, they always like you know you have to study this. I could remember one time, uh, like talking to people that you want to become an artist, mm-hmm. and they would be like, if you become an artist, like you know, like so what, like where are you gonna end up and stuff like that. So all those things are discouraging. Unlike uh, my mom, you know, she never had problem with me becoming whatever I wanted to be, especially becoming an artist. So that was the most discouraging thing. And then um, because of that, I had to do like science in high school and Mm -hmm. uh, that wasn't actually my choice, but just because to please uh, my dad at some point, Mm -hmm. uh, I should have actually done art, which I was passionate about. But even as I was doing science, I was also focusing on the art aspect because there was a guy who was close to our school and he was doing this um, art thing. Yeah, so I always go there and you see, Mm -hmm. because of that, I started developing myself more, learning online and all that. Mm -hmm. And when I completed school, I knew that this is what I wanted to be. I wanted to be an artist. I don't need to please anybody again. Mm -hmm. So I had to focus on it. And uh, thank God, you know, I'm still learning and still Mm -hmm. trying to get to where I am. And like, I've never lost hope in becoming the artist I want to be. Wow, that Mm -hmm. is touching. I think your story is connected to the Star Splash, the brand that says... Um, even if every single possible bad thing that can happen to you does, you will keep going forward. So given the fact that you studied science, you still were interested in arts and you pushed for the, to be an artist that you want to be, no matter what was happening outside of you. So thank you and keep it up. Miss Rose, let's hear your story. Who is Rose as an artist? <laughs> Well, my art started way back in elementary school. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say, like, I went to school very late, so I did not do nursery. Mm-hmm. I went straight to grade one, and uh, I struggled a lot. And I, w- I would say, I I did not have, like, a good foundation to mm-hmm. go to grade one, you mm-hmm. know, like, yeah. the writing skills, the, like, base. I couldn't do, like, anything. Mm-hmm. So, like, most of the time, like, my perform, I did not have a good performance so I was bullied a lot mm-hmm. and mostly what I do in classes because I could not speak any basic English mm-hmm. <laughs> all I do is what occupy myself with what mm-hmm. drawing like and it, like mostly you have uh, textbooks so mostly anything uh, picture I see in the textbook I keep drawing so mm-hmm. there's even if I'm given a work to do <laughs> like instead of writing I'm busy drawing so I was bullied a lot for that because I could not write and I could not read anything and mm-hmm. I think that actually well, until I was in grade four, that is when I actually started to learn uh, mm-hmm. how to read on my own. Mm-hmm. And I think because of that, I actually love the art. Like, I would draw everywhere, even on the walls of my house. I'll, wow. Like, my sister will scold me for it and all. But I, I still keep drawing. And mm-hmm. uh, I think because of that, I grew up loving. I started with pencil drawing, actually. Mm-hmm. Until recently, that is when I... Uh, was able to get into the painting and other forms of art mm-hmm. because of uh, my experience like 
looking up to other artists in the game like mm-hmm. Uncle Jomu, Palai and them. So I was able to learn a lot from them. But I would say my art actually started way back in primary school mm-hmm. and I still love doing it. Wow, I love the passion for it. And especially because you are a female and you are into the arts is something that can tell the young people that it doesn't matter what gender you are. If you're interested in something or you're passionate about it, just go in for it. So, you know, the main theme for today's discussion is arts as a platform for activism. And for me, activism is about using um, your voice or taking meaningful actions to fight against social issues that are affecting our communities. For example, what we do at Staff, which is a form of activism and advocacy, because we are able to um, talk about issues, social issues um, through service to actually take steps that will make a lot of difference in our communities. And as an artist, I want to hear what you guys have to say about activism. Do you think in your personal lives and in your drawings and in your paintings or your life as an artist, you are able to have a connection to activism? Do you use any of your paintings as a form of activism? Um, Yeah, what would you guys say? Mm, Personally, I would say, yeah. Uh, Especially when it comes to like female issues. Mm -hmm. Uh, Well, you can only do like this, uh, uh, you can be an activist on something that is an uh, issue of concern, you know, not something like everyone, you know, like, uh, you, you, you know, you can only campaign on something that is, uh, like, is less focused on, but it's very important, mm-hmm. you understand, just like the, 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 the Black Lives Matter thing, mm-hmm. like, of course, like, every lives matter, but it, yeah. the Black life was mostly affected, so they have to do a campaign on yes. that, yes. yes, so looking at the, like, the society today, you realize that female are one of the most hardworking uh, gender we have, mm-hmm. you know, and because of that, a lot of people try to, uh, uh, like, because the fact that they're female, a lot of people try to take their attention away from them. Mm-hmm. So in, in my art, what I try to do is, I try to depict that beauty of, especially the African women, mm-hmm. you know, in, in terms of their hard work. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, try to depict that beauty, you know, with, with their selling, you know, their chatting, walking, carrying kids. Mm-hmm. And those are just beautiful scenes. But uh, although it seems like, you know, they're struggling with that, mm-hmm. but it, it it gives it gives that uh, type of... Uh, feeling that, mm-hmm. wow, like, these women are so hardworking, but we can appreciate them through, mm-hmm. through the artwork. Mm-hmm. Yes, so that is what I try to show. And one other time, I can remember when uh, this issue of a female thing was so much like the, there was this rape and other things, I tried to do a portrait on, uh, I call it the sisters. Mm-hmm. No, um, it was called, uh, yeah, my... Yeah, my, my, my sister, I, I forgot the name of actually. Yeah, but it's something that has to do with... Um, like my my sister mm-hmm. okay so it's like um fighting for like the like your sister whatever she's going through you know let it be like it is it is affecting you yourself so we are guys we also have sisters and, and we have female friends mm-hmm. so we are all in the fight together mm-hmm. so i know that i cannot go and stand on the media and start shouting hey you need to stop this but i right. know that people follow my works a lot mm-hmm. so i try to use that media to 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 express to them mm-hmm. that we need to stop this we need to support our sisters mm-hmm. um, whether they're getting raped beaten or many other things like mm-hmm. that we need to stand up for them right. so that is one way i try to use my artwork to express my feelings all right thank you uh, first of all i started my art like this idea of telling a story and relating it to the society and all of that never came to mind. Mm-hmm. Mostly I was focused on realism and just portrayed and all of that. Mm-hmm. But then the last time I visited uh, one of the artists I know, that is Uncle Yu, mm-hmm. like in his house, like every painting has a story mm-hmm. <laughs> to relate to about the society and issues happening and all of that. And it makes me think a lot about... Uh, my art and I kind of, so I was like, if someone should come to me to buy this painting, like and ask like, what is the story behind this painting or this art piece? Mm -hmm. Do I have any story to relate to? And Mm -hmm. then that is when I actually realized that uh, there is more to my work. And I would say, I actually started uh, considering that when the corona came Mm -hmm. (laughs) and all of that. So observing the impact it has in the society, Mm -hmm. like, it was very like terrible and all of that. Mm-hmm. That is when actually my first painting that actually came from heart. Like 
a true story was uh, one that I paint, uh, painted of the corona and it did not even stay for long in the gallery and all of that. Mm -hmm. That is when I actually learned that I can actually use my art to promote a lot of things in the society. Right. Because it's believed that like art speaks what the world cannot say a lot yeah. of that. Right. So even though not everything can be said on the radios, like on TV and all of that, we can express that uh, in the work we do as artists. Right. And I think that plays a big role in our community. Right. It, it, it does, because usually people will not even want to hear you speak, but if they can see a painting that relates to um, no sexual harassment or no rape or no FGM, they probably would be able to um, understand that better. And, you know, some people, for example, maybe they have language barriers and they cannot hear what people say. But if you use arts as a form of advocacy or activism, then you give more people a chance to hear what you want to voice out. And especially if it's connected to the social issues that we are fighting against. So those are really, really beautiful stories. And at this point, you know, usually people say every artist dips his brush in his own soul and paints his own nature into his pictures. When we come back, we will talk more about your pictures and how you are able to deep into your souls through them. Stay tuned. that beautiful Kora performance by Jali and um, thank you so much Jali he is a staff supporter and he's been with us for um, the traditional and musical um, aspect of starfish so coming back to the discussion at hand we are talking about arts as a platform for activism and so far I am so happy about this conversation that we are having because it's all bent towards um, the realities of Gambian youth and an elevated conversation about um, issues that are affecting our lives as young people. And now the most important part is where we are going to get to, which is more like the solutions that we young people and solutions and actions that we young people can take to make this world a better place. And before we get to that, I just want to also ask, um, what are your goals and dreams for arts in the Gambia? Because I know right now you're all into different areas and doing your work. And I want to know if you have more goals and more plans and dreams for Gambia when it comes to arts. Because I think it's one of the ways we can change the misconceptions about arts in the Gambia. Mm -hmm. So uh, the fact that I am at the Gambia College and under the School of Education, mm -hmm. It means I am aspiring to become a teacher mm -hmm. someday. And I think, like it is said, that the first school starts at home with our parents. So I believe a teacher is also another parent mm -hmm. to the children. And um, most of these misconceptions about art, I think sometimes, even in the schools, we have them. Right. Like, choosing art as a subject, people will be like, like, what will you do in that class? You people are just there to to have fun and all of that. Mm -hmm. So uh, serving as a teacher, I think it's important to to actually have that uh, foundation for the children, like 
teaching them at an early age before mm-hmm. graduating school at least to know the import like not just focus as a teacher like on the syllabus as an art teacher and all of that mm-hmm. but then also what uh, emphasizing the importance of art and how it is playing uh, a role in our community and i think i it's always good to serve as the role model there and me being one of the female Gambian artists i think that is going to play a big role for students who are interested in doing art but mm-hmm. uh, do not have the motivation i think i'm going to serve as a motivation for the students and mm-hmm. i don't intend on just being an art teacher in okay. the school like i want to be an activist mm-hmm. for art in the school that i will be in wow that is so powerful and if there is a common thing i was able to spot out in both your stories is that you both are aspiring to be teachers i think zina mentioned that he's a teacher mm-hmm. yes so how will you say um how are your dreams and goals connected to um arts in the gambia my dreams and goals mm-hmm. there are many if i'm to write them in a book <laughs> <laughs> actually but one of the most important thing like uh, for me if i have the the means or the support uh, is to uh, have that availability of art materials in the gambia mm-hmm. those are one of the things that we lack here and you can see that the potential are in so many youths and they really want to do it but the materials so that is one thing uh, if you can if i can convince any um, investor also ever at company out there to come mm-hmm. into the gambia bring all their materials so gambian artists can express that artistic feeling that they have in the best way possible that they can with the materials at hand you will see that uh, gambia have more than the word talent in art uh, but it's just that we don't have what it takes like the materials mm-hmm. to to bring those things to so we try to use the uh, try to improvise with every local means we have mm-hmm. yes that's one thing and another thing is to create a uh, that platform uh, whereby people can go to school not just to be uh, taught by people who are like academic artists mm-hmm. but artists who has uh, that passion for the art itself mm-hmm. so in that way you will know what you're putting into people you're not just doing it for the job right. you're doing it because you want people to uh, like to be impacted by this right. like you want to impact a life from your own service you want to be an evidence that yes art is this mm-hmm. so you can only do that if you have a passion for it not just because you're doing it for the job mm-hmm. or because you want to you know satisfy like your your human means of having a salary or something like that right. yes yeah. so those are the type of things that we need to have we need to have like the art academy me we have people at the end of the day at the end of their studies or whatsoever they will be proud to say mm-hmm. i am going to study this in this college yeah. i'm going to school to study art mm-hmm. they will not just go at the end of the day and then they have no other option but to engage themselves into a field just mm-hmm. to fit into the society right yeah, so that is one of the challenges we face and i hope we have that and thanks to god that we are trying to um, have more places like uh, like for example we have a place like this um, starfish gallery mm-hmm. where artists are given the opportunity to come and display their artworks or come mm-hmm. you know have interaction on the art yeah. thing so this is one of the dreams but um, in the long run we hope that there will be more galleries mm-hmm. whereby artists will be uh, encouraged to do more exhibitions and a lot of other mm-hmm. things and gambian to embrace the gambian art as well right. yes very very powerful i think at this point i want to ask you guys what your final power messages are about arts and advocacy and activism i would say um, i don't have much to say mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, one thing i would say is uh, particularly to the young female out there who are aspiring to become artists mm-hmm. like to be involved even if you're not planning to be a full time artist but you have the passion and the talent mm-hmm. I think it's high time you listen to yourself mm-hmm. than to what the society think you should do with art. Right. Because I don't think God makes any mistake in giving a talent to someone else. Mm-hmm. You see. So the fact that it is given to you it means it needs to be seen and no one can show that but yourself. Right. So it's high time for you to pop up and show that beautiful uh, talent you were given right. by God. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, my final power message is uh, for people to be open up to the artists and for people to stop having the misconception mm-hmm. about what art is. 
-hmm. you know, and you know, start giving that support to the young ones because it really hurts when you see someone who is so much into art, and then all of a sudden this person comes up to you and says, you know, I used to draw, you know, but you know, I started doing so those things like sometimes it pisses me off, like you used to draw, and then what happened, and then you like, you know, um, I have to go into this, and then the person have to stop it because of sometimes like family pressure, peer influence, or many mm -hmm. other things. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's so much bad. You know, it because of that we've lost so many legends in art that we should be having in Gambia now, mm -hmm. but we don't. In Gambia, yeah. uh, I think they should also like be having like historical records teaching us about our artists because mm -hmm. we we we've had some great artists, uh, but you know they're dead and gone and no one hears about them. We need to like search on those people's work, try mm -hmm. to bring back the Gambian art. Mm -hmm. You know, that that's our originality, you know, that's that's when the world will recognize like what actually Gambian art is different from other and then they will try to embrace it more. You know, you have people like Njoguture who is mm -hmm. also like, you know, they're leaving a legacy because right. their their artwork speaks a different language from any other nationality. Africa. Yes, yes, oh, Africa yes. and you know the way, you know, of the way he does his art. Mm -hmm. You know, imagine youth coming up learning about Njogu art and then they we know that this is originally from Gambia, yes. you know, and then you have a lot of people, I know of an artist, but he's, 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 he's not around now, and mm -hmm. he, he passed away, but he's also a great artist. If we learn about those people, it will really, really bring a lot of changes in the Gambian art industry, mm -hmm. and our government people, everyone have to embrace art and try to support the young artists as yeah. well. Yeah, try to support the young artists. That is important message out there. Um, I want to say art is love, art is light, and art is life. But the aim of art is not to represent the outward appearance of things, but their inward significances. And I think that is why um, having art as a means for advocacy and activism is very, very important. At this point, I want to say thank you very much to my guest speakers for coming and putting their hearts and soul into this discussion. I want to say thank you very much for all the meaningful service and activism you're doing um, in the Gambia. And I also want to call on all the artists to come to Starfish International. We have an art gallery that is the only art gallery in the Gambia that is supposedly built for the community people to come and interact and teach the younger generation so you're all welcome to come and i also want to send shout outs to all our artists and supporters out there who have been coming to the art gallery to draw and put their souls and um, hearts into paintings also want to thank the media house and all the listeners out there um, thank you all for your time and attention